luxury travel and adventure and we are always so excited to hear what we're going to talk about which i know we should have done more show prep but what are we talking about today? <laughs> <laughs> we are actually going to talk about a trip that i am going to be hosting in 2024 i think i know about this trip this sounds very exciting yeah yeah it's a river cruise on the seine river in france and it's going to be in conjunction with the 80th anniversary of the D-Day landings. So we'll have a chance to actually go visit the D-Day landing sites as well as the river cruise. That is very special. How yeah. often do you get to lead your own trips? I try to do two or three each year. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes more, sometimes less, but I try to do two or three each year. Do you have to get certified or something to be a leader? I do not. Okay. I do not. So I'm winging it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've done many before when I've learned some of the some of the wrinkles. But no, there is actually no certification to be a uh, group leader. But maybe we should start one. That'd be a good side gig. Well, I think that then you're kind of at the mercy of somebody. You've always you've done these trips before, though. I you've, have. You've been yeah. to the places you're leading people yes. to. Yes. Yes. So that's a prerequisite. Yep. Yes. Yep. And we work with local tour guides. Oh yes. And so you know the guiding itself is going to be done by folks who live there and really do have those certifications and I'm just kind of there to host the group and make sure that everything runs smoothly and you know if there are any hiccups along the way I'm there to kind of smooth them over. But you know that must be kind of fun because I know when you plan a trip you put a lot of effort and time into it and you probably a lot of times just look at your calendar and you think oh so and so is in Paris now or they're in someplace else now but this you actually get to see them enjoying this trip yeah i get to join it i get to see them have mm -hmm. that experience that i've planned for them so it is kind of a a neat experience for me you know in addition to just the trip itself so tell us about this trip you're planning please yeah so this is a two-week trip and it will be in late april early may of 2024 so the actual dates are april 25th through may 8th of 2024 and we start in paris and so you will fly from Minneapolis to Paris. And in Paris, we'll spend two nights in the city and have a chance to see quite a few of the attractions there. One of the ones that I'm kind of excited about is something that's called the Atelier de Lumière. And if you happen to see the publicity or if you happen to go to the Van Gogh exhibit here in Minneapolis where they have the... The immersive one. Where they have the immersive light experience. Well, this is the original one in Paris. And so we're actually going to have a chance to go. It's in a restored um, department store. And so it's been converted. The department store has been closed and it's been converted into this, you know, sort of a theater mm. in the round where you get to sort of have this immersive sound and light experience with these incredible paintings that were all painted in France. So a neat experience in addition to all the, you know, the must-sees in Paris, the Eiffel Tower and the Arche de Triomphe and the um, Montmartre neighborhood, which is kind of the little bohemian neighborhood in Paris where it's sort of a small country village kind of plunked down right in the middle of Paris. So we'll spend two nights in Paris and then we'll board a river cruise ship that will take seven days to travel up the Seine River from Paris to the city of Le Havre, which is on the ocean. And it's actually one of the biggest ports in the world. And back in the day, if you were taking an ocean liner tour from France, you would take it to Le Havre. And so that's where the cruise will end. And it's only about 200 miles, mm. the entire distance of the cruise. So it moves at a really, really... Really, really relaxed pace. I would say um, plenty of time along the way to stop and see and experience all the neat things that, you know, make France kind of a cool place. And how to many go. little stops along the way will you have? So the ship stops every day, and oh, sometimes nice. it stops in more than one place. Some of the highlights that, that we'll see the first one is the gardens of Giverny which is where Monet painted the mm -hmm. water lilies and other paintings. And it's one of those places that absolutely looks like the tourist brochure. You know, the pictures are really, really beautiful. And, of course, it'll be the end of April. So it'll be sort of the end of spring and all the flowers will be in bloom. So I think it'll be an absolutely beautiful time to see Giverny. We'll see several chateaus, French castles, along the way. Some of them are ruins and some of them are still in total existence and in total operation. And some of them have little dairies attached to them where they make cheese or they have vineyards attached to them where they make wine so there will be some neat opportunities to do that we'll visit the city of rouen in france and it's one of the more 
one of the more historic cities in France. The city center is still very, very well preserved from the Middle Ages. And so it's quite picturesque. A lot of those kind of half-timbered, colorful buildings. And it's also the city where Joan of Arc was burned at the stake. So there's an interesting museum there that's dedicated to her life, which is certainly an interesting story that we've all heard of it, but probably don't really know the full Mm -mm. breadth of the story. So she was quite a powerful historical figure in, in French history. We will also visit the city of Caen, which is spelled C-A-E-N, not to be confused with the city of Caen in southern France. And Caen was um, was basically destroyed during World War II. So um, most of the city has been rebuilt since then. But it is the home to the D-Day Landing Museum. And so it's a really, really large, really, really well done museum that interprets the history of D-Day and the D-Day landings, as well as World War II. And, and it's a really, it's really fascinating because I think most of us have heard of these stories of D-Day. Maybe we've even watched the movie The Longest Day, but to actually see it in person is really an incredible, powerful experience. And so this museum is kind of the appetizer. And then we'll have the opportunity to spend an entire day exploring the D-Day landing beaches. And so there were five different beaches there. Omaha Beach is the one that the Americans, that was where most of the Americans were. That is where that large cemetery mm-hmm. is located. But it's also fascinating to see, you know, two miles inland and all the big German fortifications that were built there. You know, mm-hmm. and they were built out of concrete and, and they aren't going anywhere anytime soon. So you can really get a sense of what the liberators were up against when they landed there. And it's also interesting to see the difference between Omaha Beach and some of the other beaches. Because some of them were big, wide, flat, sandy beaches. And so they were much, much easier for the um, troops to liberate. And Omaha Beach is particularly difficult. It has cliffs and rocks surrounding it, so there are lots of places for the bad guys to have their guns and things like that. So absolutely fascinating. Definitely the high point of the trip will be that day spent exploring Normandy. And it is the 80th anniversary of D-Day on June 6th, 2024. So we'll be there just before then, and there will certainly be some special commemorations and other things going on as well. That's hard to believe it's been 80 years. I know. I know. Yeah, I remember the 50th anniversary of mm-hmm. D-Day. So yeah, 80 years since the D-Day landings. So really nobody that was fighting there would be able to go on a trip like this. Probably I not. No. But no. certainly if you have studied history or you've paid attention to family gatherings and there's somebody in your family that has a tie to Yeah, this. it's very likely that someone in your family did serve in World War II, perhaps not in Normandy, perhaps in Normandy, but perhaps elsewhere. And it is really a place where you can see and experience much of, of you know, it hasn't changed much. Mm. since then. The villages are still small. It's a very, very rural area. And so it is really fascinating to see that history. And, and for does folks it have, who have a, a solemn pre- feel? Oh, it does. It very much does. I think it's, you know, I always, I always kind of tell people that I think that it's something we should kind of force all high school kids to go to Normandy. Like a sacred yeah, feel almost? Very much, it's very much a sacred feel. And the, the cemetery there is particularly powerful. And, you know, if you saw Saving Private Ryan, you saw pictures of the cemetery, but it's really big. And I don't think anything prepares you for that. And so it is a really very emotionally charged day, I think, for a lot of people. Interesting, historical, but also has a deeper significance than that. So if that was the only thing on the trip, it would be well worth the trip just to see that. But we've got some other things planned that I think will, you know, fill those two weeks up nicely. And what day of the trip is that? So that'll be, I think that'll be the ninth day of the trip. It'll be the last full day on the cruise. And then we actually disembark from the cruise ship and drive a little farther south along the coast of France to the province of Brittany or Britannia, as the French call it. And Brittany is really a step back in time. Oh, It's a very rural province. It's very rocky. It's very desolate. You know, it's kind of like Newfoundland, maybe, in Canada. So it's on the Um, ocean? So it's on the ocean, yeah. And it's actually on the um, kind of the very, very tip of France, if you look at a map of France. And we'll be spending three days in the city of Saint-Malo. M-A-L-O, which is a walled city, very, very well-preserved city. And 
back in the day. I say back in the day a lot, don't I? Well, but back in the day, <laughs> back for, in the you, day. for you means well, hundreds of yes, years ago. Yes, hundreds of years ago. <laughs> it was actually another major port in France, and it's where many of the French explorers departed for the New World from. And so Samuel de Champlain, who discovered the St. Lawrence River in Canada, came from St. Malo. That was his point of departure. So it's an interesting city. It's a walled city, very historic, and it's near several interesting places. And the highlight is a monastery called Mont Saint Michel. And if you Google it, you will instantaneously recognize it. It is this incredible Gothic monastery on a little pile of rock that is totally cut off from the mainland at high tide. And so now now there's a causeway. But back in the day, again, um, the only way you could get there was to go on a boat or to cross like the tidal flat in between tides. And so it was a very isolated monastery back when that isolation was part of the monastic existence. Is so it an active monastery? It is an active monastery, and it has a little village kind of built into the side of the monastery, but just an incredible, incredible experience to see it. It's, it's absolutely breathtaking. One of the most beautiful places in the world, I think, is Mont Saint-Michel. And we get a chance to go across? We get a chance to go across, and yep, the good news is now there's a causeway, so the okay. bus can drop you off at the entrance to town. And how do the um, monks feel about that? Uh, you know, it's, they're modern monks now, so I okay. think they're maybe more in tune with the <laughs> modern world. And, you know, the monastery has a really big souvenir shop. So that's, that's probably that's how probably they make their money. How they make their money now. They don't have to beg <laughs> anymore like the mon- monks back, back, in, back, the in, the day. back <laughs> in the day. Back in the day. And so then at, at the end of the trip, we'll head back to Paris and we'll spend a night at a hotel at the airport in Paris and then head home to the United States afterward. So it's a two-week trip, April 25th through May 8th, and we are actually looking for people to sign up for it now. So um, we are definitely well, well down the path of planning this. So I'm hosting a couple info sessions in River Falls, where my office is. We have one coming up on January 10th. We have one coming up on January 12th, and we have one coming up on February 16th. And you can register for those. They're all free. You can register on the River Falls Community Education website, which is www.rflearns.org. Or just give me a call at 651-964-8245, and we will put you on the list. And we'll actually um, go into a little more depth, talk a little bit more about the itinerary, give you some more of the highlights of it, talk about pricing and and all those nitty-gritty details. So we'd love to have some of the listeners come and Join us for those info sessions and certainly join us on the cruise. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. Well, I bet you are. And this is something that, as you mentioned, even though it's two weeks, I like the pace of it. You're not trying to rush through because you really shouldn't be rushing through some no, of these No, you shouldn't things. rush through. And, 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 you know, there's plenty of free time built into the itinerary. And whether it's in Paris and the big city, you know, you can explore so much on foot in Paris. But but one of the neat things is that a lot of the times we'll spend the afternoon and the evening in docked in a little village. And so you can get off and go for a stroll and, you know, have a glass of wine, go shopping, just just get off and enjoy. And if you're more active, the boat has some bikes on it. So you can actually take a guided bike ride along the river through the vineyards and the little rolling hills around there. So lots of things to do for folks who maybe really want to get away from people. And the the ship itself is very small. Yeah, what cruise line is this, please? So the cruise line is called Ama Waterways. And so the cruise ship carries about 130 passengers. So it's a very small river cruise ship. And this is a pretty small river. Um, When you see some of the bends that these ships have to navigate mm. their way around. It's it's impressive how, how good of a job the captains do. So it's a very small ship. It's a very inclusive experience. So meals will be included and they, they really do a nice job with the food. I was kind of shivering over the last couple of days because it's been so cold here and I was reminded of how good the soup is on mm. Ama Waterways. They have really good soup. So something to look forward to. But beverages are included with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, so alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. There's also what's called a sip and sail event before dinner each night where there's an open bar, so you can have a pre-dinner cocktail. All the excursions are included, both on land and during the cruise portion as well. And there's actually free Wi-Fi on the ship, too, so you don't have to worry about losing touch with the loved ones back home or bragging up the trip that you're on. So you can do both. (laughs) 
So again, these informational sessions that you're having, it's going to be January 10th, the 12th, and February 16th, and we can register online. How long of a meeting will be? It'll take about an hour and a half. Okay. Um, we're actually going to talk about two trips. Another one is a trip to Alaska, so we're going to cover both of them. But, you know, you can head out if you don't want to hear about both of them. We'll do the river cruise first and the Alaska cruise second, and we'll have some snacks and refreshments. Ted, really a cruise, when you mention not only is this one all-inclusive, but it, it takes away you, you the thinking part even, doesn't it? I mean, It does. You just kind of get to get up and enjoy what's planned for you. And the folks at Ama Waterways and I have, they work really hard to put together a great experience for their guests. To just tell you where to go. Just but, tell you where to go and you know, be you here at 9 o'clock really and you think. don't have to worry about it. And the nice thing, too, is that there is often a choice of activities in port. So you do have to put your thinking cap on a little bit, and you can decide, you know, you might want to go on that bike ride that I talked about. There might be kind of a foodie adventure you can go on. There might be a wine tasting, might be a chateau, might be a chance to do a tour of the little town you dock in. Um, So usually there's a choice of two or three excursions in each port, and those are all going to be included in the price as well. But the nice part, too, I think, is that when you're on a cruise or when you're on some sort of a tour, they will take you right up to the destination. You don't have to worry about parking or walking nope. really you don't super have to worry far about parking. distances. Yep. And you have a guide who's going to tell you what you see so you don't miss anything. And, and my favorite thing is you don't have to fight with your family about where to go for dinner. They've got a great restaurant on the ship. It's all taken care of. The food is excellent. Very French. You know, they'll bring France on board. But they also have traditional American dishes as well. So I don't know about nachos. I'm going to have to ask. They have really good French fries. (laughs) I'll I'll ask about the nachos. No, as long as they have French fries, that's Uh, They have steak, you know, steak, salmon, chicken. French French onion soup. Yeah, French bread. Okay. Yeah, and it'll be real French bread. No kidding. Yeah. Well, this sounds wonderful. So, again, the dates are April 25th through May 8th of 2020. Let's plan ahead. This sounds really fun. Ted, how can people get a hold of you, please? Yeah, so the um, best way to get a hold of me is to give me a call at 651 964 8245. You can visit my website at tedblanktravel.com or you can check me out on Facebook at facebook.com slash tedblanktravel. And this show is called The Travel Show with host Ted Blank of Ted Blank Luxury Travel.